Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am continuing my part two of the Scorpio, the light side, and um, giving you my thoughts on the sign and really kind of um, giving it to you in a way that is, oh God, just so firsthand because it's just so personal because it's, it, I am like so close to this sign in myself. So yeah, I, I've shared a lot in my last video about understanding the scorpion and I would like to continue sharing a bit more with you. So let's just start off where I left off. Um, yeah, it is very hard to tell the truth. And one of the lines out of the movie, it's hard to tell the truth when people around you are in a lie. So basically, if someone around you is in a lie, you have to be in a lie to interact with them. Someone who's telling the truth is going to be at odds of the versing the reality of the person that isn't telling the truth. Does that make... I Fuck, I hope I explain that. <laughs> I really hope that I explain that. So if... Basically, if you've got a family that's all... The way that they interact with them each other is a lie and you have someone that refuses to do that, we're going to have conflict here because they're like, no, this is the dysfunction that's going on. This is why you're behaving this way. And they're in, they're in denial of it. Basically, my childhood. <laughs> oh, my God. So a lot of people would ask me, or a Scorpio, why don't you go out more? How come you don't go to clubs? And it's, it's a little bit trickier for me because I'm a left-hand path. I am more to the dark side of the occult. I'm more interested in the heavier, heavier shit. I don't do what I call fluff fluff, you know, like light and fluffy. <laughs> like let's talk about bullshit. That's so not me. And so I'll, I'll say it now. I can go out to a club or to a bar with some people. I even have other people around me and listen to some crap or I can go home and get in a bath of chocolate with roses, red roses around me and have a glass of wine and indulge in connecting to a higher being, to a demon or to a extra sensory connection to something beyond the physical world. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not really saying I have bars of chocolate, but you know what I'm saying? Like I, and be vibrating from head to toe with a connection of an entity that is beyond uh, like the capacity of another human. Like that right there in a nutshell is what I am all about. I'm interested in connecting to the other side and I'm interested in taking things higher and I think it's because I'm born with that Jupiter placement because I'm right on the cusp of Sag and Scorpio. So I have this, this part of me in the Sag that just wants to transcend everything and go further and further and further. And the philosophical part of me wants to see, well, what behind that? What's behind that? Well, if that created that, then who made you? Who made that? Like that's kind of where my brain goes. And that can be very full on for a lot of people because I don't want to talk about who came first, the chicken or the egg. Like, what is the point of existence? Why are we here? These big questions come up a lot around Scorpio. That's why they're interested in sex, death, rebirth, and regeneration. It's a big part of who they are, asking why are we here? And we must be in tune with a higher vibrational force, you know, and we can't be the only ones out there in the universe either. So there is a dark primal energy which surges in my being that I like to let out, that I like to play with. And generally, it is more of a solitary thing. It's not with other people. And it would be very rare, you know, trying to find your tribe. And I know one day I will. I believe that I will. I believe that, yeah, to a big capacity, we do manifest our own reality and that I will, choose, I will eventually find people that can take me in and I will have my family. I will have a place of my own in the sun. I believe in that. And so it mode it be, so shall it be. But in between then, um, you know, it's kind of like I jumped out of a boat and now I'm trying to find my tribe and I'm swimming around going, hey, where are you? Where are you? And I thought that I would find my tribe by making a tarot card deck. And I thought I would find like-minded kin, but I didn't. I found a couple 
But for the most part, I just found bullshit. I found self-indulgent nonsense um, and late capitalism. I explained a little bit, I touched on it in my video, lockdown, burnout and moving on, where I talk about, you know, my thoughts on a lot of spirituality and how it's become like a tool, sorry, not a tool, it's become like a coping mechanism for life. And generally the ones that are teaching it are doing the least about making change in the world and addressing the problems. It's like numbing the problems um, but it's not actually addressing the problems. And that's not what spirituality is about. We're not here to transcend the physical. We're here to implement change through our life and implement our lessons on a physical level, not just become non-human. Non-human, trans, transcending humanism is ridiculous. Like we're all human and we all incarnated here for a reason. And so we've got to figure out, you know, who we are, what our strengths, what our weaknesses are, what makes us fabulous and work with that, not just go, well, I'm transcending now into a high dimension so I don't have to partake in life and ha ha ha, because that's just another form of <clears throat> spiritual bypassing, which I see a lot of in the world in general where people are like, you know, how we destroy the planet that we're on, we're destroying it, we're completely destroying it. And um, hasn't got actually hasn't got that long left before it gets too far gone and it can't be I don't, maybe it has an hour fuck I'm pretty sure it has where it's just completely irreversible, and you know just going oh well you know I'll I'll live out my normal life and I'll die in my seventies and eighties and then you know someone else will you know it's the future generation's problem they'll take care of the earth they'll fix everything we fucked like that type of irresponsible thinking isn't even remotely viable anymore that type of irresponsible thinking to a scorpion uh, is just ridiculous. So back to Scorpio. Scorpios are like catnip for the spiritual world. We are like a beacon of light shining out into the world that really the other side, like one of the things that I will say, when you connect with the other side or when you connect with the spirit world, the spirits see you. They like you're putting yourself out there. Okay. So when, when you start connecting to, and I'm not talking about like Instagram shit, I'm not talking about people doing aesthetically pleasing pictures that look witchy because they feel disempowered in their own life. And now they're just trying to play make believe. They haven't done the due diligence to research and do the work and understand what they're doing. I'm talking about the real thing, the real witches, the real occultists, they know that when you start accessing higher realms of consciousness and other dimensions, the other side can see you doing that. Yeah. That's why a lot of like little baby witches, when they try and connect with higher beings, that entity or that demon or that spirit would never, ever show up for them because they haven't done the time and dedicated the energy and and just really understood what they're doing. And they don't have, and by the way, you've got to have power to get power. That's actually how power works in this physical reality. Power only lends itself to something that is, it is of value to. And one of the things I've learned, it's same with marketing. You've got to have someone above you that has more followers than you, like you, and then they expose you to their followers. That's how power works. But the person who has the power has to have a reason to do so kind of just hit the nail on the head right there. That's how you acquire power. You need power to get power. And it takes time and energy and effort. And a lot of people that come into the spiritual world, just outside of the subject of Scorpio, they just want a quick fix. They want it immediately. They want to make these magical spells all happen quickly and all these things will change in their life. And they're kind of, you know, summoning or trying to request a deity to show up like a fucking genie and magically make something happen for them when they are doing nothing in their own life to make anything happen. And that's why I am more gravitated towards the left-hand path because the left-hand path isn't going to do some kind of give your power to Jesus shit. What the left-hand path is going to do is get you to take responsibility for yourself, for your own self. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, 
it's nobody else's fault but your own, okay? Because it was your choice, right? That is a big part of why I gravitate towards the left-hand side of things because I'm not giving my power over to some, you know, magical man in the sky. Like, you know, that's kind of right up there with like the Easter bunny and Santa Claus. I am connecting to entities and beings that have transcended beyond that, that created that, that. And also they have to look at me from a place of what does he want and why would I help him? before they even showed up. So there's no entitlement with the left-hand side. You know, what, a, what an entity on the left-hand side would do for you is they, it would plant a seed in you, if you're lucky. And then you have to get the watering can and you have to nurture it and grow it and love it and give it the time that it deserves to help it grow and flourish in the world in your own reality. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. And back to the Scorpio thing, because I'm continuing the Scorpio part two here is that I'm not going to spoon feed you the secrets of a Scorpio. I have covered a lot, but I still know a lot that I'll never say because it's none of your business. Yeah. And the word occult means secret. Yeah. Yeah. You have to find your own path. You can't piggyback off other people's path. You have to find their paths, sorry. You have to find your own way and carve your own way through the world. And yeah, you have leaders, you have people that can teach you stuff, but you have to be the one to do the work to acquire knowledge and power. Okay, I'm not just talking about like Instagram followers and shit, which is how capitalism is. So it's like the more followers you have, the more um, attention you get, the more that translates into sale. That's more audience. Yeah, I'm talking about the more knowledge you have about nature and the craft, whether it is Luciferianism or whether it is Buddhism. Well, not so much Buddhism, whether it is you know, pagan, Wicca, whatever, you have to take the time to do the work. And this doing the work comes up a lot around, around a Scorpio, you've got to be willing to do the work. Okay, so that's back to the start of what I was saying at the start of this video, part two is that you have to be willing to tell the truth. You have to, like, I'd give you a shadow, a shadow work activity right now for Scorpio. For anyone would be, I want you to take off all your clothes. I want you to stand bare naked. Actually, before you do that, no food for the whole day. Yep. No food for the whole day. Maybe cold pressed juice, maybe some water. You won't die. It won't kill you. You want to do some real shadow work? Really? Really? <laughs> this is shadow work. Ready? This is shadow work. Take off all your clothes after a day of no food, light a candle in front of you, put it down on the floor in front of a mirror and stare at yourself in the reflection of the mirror. No pulling away. Okay, from a lot of people wouldn't even be able to do this for more than a few minutes. You have to stare at yourself until your face starts to warp and morph. And then you start to look at yourself and understand the energy, look beyond the physical, look beyond the person and start vibing into a deeper consciousness. And after a while, you won't see a human standing in front of you. You'll see something else. And if you're willing enough and you've got out of your own ego enough of what your own sense of self-concept is, you'll be shocked at what's actually in front of you. That right there is shadow work. By the way, on the subject of shadow work, there's no use in doing shadow work unless you're prepared to actually implement change. That's why for a lot of, for me at this point in my life, me going to a psychiatrist and talking about my feelings isn't going to do fuck all. I already know how I feel and I know why I feel the way that I feel. Now all that's left is to do is to move into the direction of taking action to change things. If I don't feel good to move it into something that can make me feel better. But I also understand that I have to suffer and go through some level of trial and tribulation to create something of value. Nothing of any worth is free. 
<laughs> <laughs> so this is such a heavy video, but it's true. Yeah. And if you're out there and you're listening to this right now, I'm, I promise, I really hope, I really feel that this would be resonating with you so deeply. Okay. <laughs> this is why a lot of people just... <laughs> This is why a lot of people, I just don't think they know how to approach me. They just don't know how to approach me. And I, I can see why sometimes because I'm like this a lot, but you know, I'm not always a hard ass, but yeah, like this is, you know, this is the real stuff. Sometimes I, you know, I do get in the trough, what I call is the trough where you get down with all the pigs in the mud and you get on a social media and I might engage in a comment and someone will write a comment back and shit. But I get so angry at myself because it's such a low level thinking. It's what I call stinking thinking. When you, you, your thinking stinks, it's ridiculous. And I'm human, you know, and I get angry at myself and go, why the fuck did I waste my time writing that back? But yeah, you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure you guys have been, you know, pulled into that, pulled down the rabbit hole into this type of shit. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, um, I'm just like thinking, what can I say? Um, the, the light side of the Scorpio, I want to get back to the light side. I mean, we've gone off, off the rail a little bit. Um, there's so much in my head that it's just kind of like pulsating with all this energy. Even right now, as I'm connecting like to my higher self, like my whole body is vibrating from my head to my toes. I'm vibrating with this energy. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I think what I would say, Pluto is, you know, in conjunction with, Hades. I think when I think of Pluto, I think of Hades. When I think of Pluto, I think of Scorpio. Scorpio is also a dual planet ruled by Mars, which I think of Mars. I think of Aries, the god of war. Scorpio is not afraid of a fight, but I've learned that, you know, the light-sided Scorpio isn't really interested in engaging in fighting and bickering and arguing because it's just like playing a long-term game and all of this, you know, fighting and stuff is all just nonsense. It's all bullshit. So I tend to stay away from that because it can be um, mentally derailing. That's why I don't engage a lot with the communities or with other people that I just don't feel get me because I already see like they're not, they're already not coming at a place where they're able to really understand where I'm coming from. So what would be the point of that even, um, you know, what would be the point of that? So the light-sided um, part of the Scorpio is that they are very sexual, obviously, and they are very sexy. A lot of the sexiest sign, the sexiest people in the world are all Scorpios. And it, it is like an allure. It is a power that they have. And um, yeah, I agree. I can see it too outside of myself. I can really understand that they want that deep connection to sex and romance, like novel romance. They love that. They can be very romantic and um, they do demand loyalty, much like the polar opposite to Scorpio is the Taurus. They do demand a level of loyalty. Yes. You know, and I would say to any air sign, like I've said before, if you're a Gemini or a Libra, you'll do better in life if you choose a side and are loyal to that side. That's how you'll make a Scorpio feel safe. And ultimately, they want to make you feel safe from everything but them. <laughs> so I don't know. I've got so much more to say, but I think I'm just going to leave it here. Uh, yeah, there's so much more in my head. Um, I've covered a lot. Go back and look at part one of Scorpio, the light side. Uh, I know this has been really heavy and really interesting. Um, lots of things have come up. I didn't think that a lot of this stuff would come up in this chat. And I think part of it, the beauty of me doing this podcast is that I don't really know, like, it's like what's underneath the surface and what wants to come up in the, in the chat is what kind of, is what's lurking underneath there kind of might want to strike up and come through. So I just kind of get out of its way and let it come through. So I will let you go. Um, thank you so much for listening to my video. This has been a good one, part one and two of Scorpio, the light side. Please leave your comments below if any of this resonated with you or if it didn't resonate with you. I'd love to hear your opinions and thoughts on things. Please uh, share and subscribe to the channel because 
it shows me that you're interested in what I'm doing and um, yeah, engage and reach out to me. I am not going to buy it. <laughs> well, hard. <laughs> All right. Be well and uh, have a really great week. And I will see you in the next video. The last three signs we're doing is the air signs. And I think Gemini is next. Oh my God. Gemini, <laughs> Gemini might, might need to be a part two, actually. So I will let you go. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.